After the day's shopping trip and Wren's weirdness, we both retire to our respective dorms. The students roll into class for the Saturday morning session, each and every one of them sporting the tired eyes of people who have worked through the night. As before, Muto writes a few equations and all on the board, and the class sits around bored and listless, very tiredly waiting until noon and the end of classes for the day. Muto asks us to come out into the hallway where he talks about our health for a while and then inquires on what our plans are for the future. Uh, we talked briefly about the importance of science and uh, how good I am at it and how he thinks I would uh, be a good profession for me. And then we return back into class for the end of the day. The clock on the wall slowly ticks the remaining class away until finally the bells cry out, ending the torment. Before you leave, Muto says, I expect the answers for those problems by Monday. The class size is one, instantly regretting slacking off, but still acutely aware of the more pressing issues at hand. The classroom empties in a blink as everyone rushes to their last minute festival preparations. I stay behind and try to quickly finish the question so I don't have to bother with it over the rest of the weekend with the festival and all tomorrow. Apart from me, Hanako is the only one left, obviously waiting for Lily. It's weird that Lily comes all the way to our classroom to pick her up. I expect that moving around is at least nominally harder for her than it is for Hanako. But it's none of my business, and I naturally don't ask about it from Hanako. Despite the relative proximity of our seats, neither tries to strike up a conversation about that or anything else either, so an oppressive silence falls upon the classroom. Time passes in silence. It's probably just 15 minutes or so, but it feels longer. I turn pages in my notebook. Hanako turns pages of the novel she's reading. My pencil lead splinters against the paper just when I was about to finish a paragraph. The sounds of my irritated sigh and subsequent fumbling around for a sharpener feel like they're breaking the mood in the classroom. Hanako keeps her eyes firmly away from my direction. Before long, Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. Hanako, she says. Her name is all it takes to make Hanako jump up from her desk and run to Lily. They talk quietly for a moment, but it isn't long before Lily leaves down the hallway and Hanako idles back into the classroom, taking her seat once again. I watch Hanako out of the corner of my eye out of sheer curiosity at the idea that the two would be separated. For a couple of minutes, she does nothing but sit with her chin in her hand, staring at the desk dejectedly. The boredom of ev evidently becomes too much for her, though, her slender frame reaching into her bag and pulling out a small book. Come to think of it, that isn't the one that I saw her reading at the library. She must be quite a fast reader to get through them at this rate. But why would Lily leave her to her own devices? It seems to be quite out of the ordinary going by Hanako's reaction. Ah, that's right. I think Lily mentioned something about going into town today before Wren bumped into us. The thought of that walk makes me look outside. The bright sun and occasional people wandering around and enjoying the afternoon make me yearn to get out of school or at least do something other than sit here. Giving in to one of my worst vices, procrastination, I decide that history is a subject best studied on a Sunday or a Monday or on any day other than this one. I give a grunt as I lever myself out of my seat, briefly debating with myself whether or not to hang out with Kenji. He doesn't strike me as the enjoying the nice weather outside with others kind of person, really. I guess I'll catch up with him later. 
Changing tax, I briefly entertain the idea of talking with Hanako, but by the time I look at her seat, it's vacant. She must have left for the library. There's got to be something to do that can kill the time. The library seems as good a place as any to go. Hanako looked as if she was taken pretty off guard by Lily leaving, so she might want someone to talk to. Slinging my bag over my shoulder, I make my way out of the classroom. I walk down the hallway to the library past a multitude of closed doors. Through each one of the sound of furious rehearsal can be heard. Rock music blares out of one door, almost as loud as a concert. I guess that's one of the advantages of a private school. There are actually enough rooms to go around at a time like this. And, when I think about it, the grounds and the buildings of the school are kept in pretty good condition. That can't be too cheap. I've heard that this place has some pretty serious benefactors. The walls of the library only partially insulate the noise of the festival preparations but they're the only sounds to be heard. Not a soul stirs here, with everyone apparently enjoying the weather outside or working on festival events. Yuko isn't here either. Maybe she doesn't work on Saturdays. I quietly walk through the library, now fairly familiar with its layout. I head to the back where Hanako's private little corner is. I run my hand along the spines of the books on the way through, feeling the individual texture of each as I glance across the titles. I used to do this all the time at the library at the hospital. Some things never change, I guess. Like the smell of a library. No matter how much care you take, the paper and books is always going to degrade with time. Probably, no matter which library you go into, anywhere in the world, it must have that same musty smell. I find something that looks light enough to read without any major thought involved, then look for Hanako in the reading area. Once again, she is sitting on a beanbag with her back to a bookshelf. Reading the same book she'd had in the classroom, she's slowly making her way through the pages. Unlike last time I saw her here, I quietly take a seat in a beanbag. The noise is enough to catch her attention, but not startle her. This delicate routine that must be followed each and every time I try to talk to her almost feels like hunting game. Is that the same book as before, I ask? Yes, I I'm almost finished. Cool, I say. I wonder if I should. Do you mind if I borrow it when you're finished? I ask her. My mouth is faster than my mind, it seems. Sure, you may not like it, but... I'm sure it can't be that bad, I say. After all, you've stuck with it, haven't you? I... I guess. I settle into my beanbag and set about reading my own book that had been buried in my bag. It's a light novel about pirates. To be honest, I'm barely skimming over the words, having chosen the book merely because it belongs to a different genre than I usually read. Finding it hard to muster enough enthusiasm to finish the book, and noting that I've inadvertently distracted Hanako quite a bit, I decide to try and make conversation. So, I see Lily left without you. She nods before taking her eyes off her book. She must have been really into it after all. Lily said she had to go and meet someone. Oh, I say? Uh, Akira, her sister, Hanako explains. Sister? I haven't heard her talk about her family, I say. She... She and Akira used to live together. I thought all the students lived in the dorms. Th they... I, I mean we... Don't have to. I say, but it's easier, right? I mean there's food here and you're close to school. I don't think I've ever been to class on time so often in my life. 
Her badly hidden smile proves quite rewarding. In the back of my mind, I know I have a bit of homework to catch up on, but it's quite comfortable in here. No one can find me and force me into working for their pet project either. Though, now that I'm thinking about the festival, uh, another question comes up. Hey, Hanako, I ask. What are you doing for the festival? For a split second, I think that Hanako is about to throw her book in the air from shock. S sorry I was just asking what you're doing for the festival tomorrow. Anything planned? Uh, I don't know. Hanako answers in the way that people do when they don't want you to ask any more questions. I take it large crowds and loud music aren't really her thing. Oh, okay, I say. Change the subject, change the subject. So, what's Lily's sister like? She's... she's nice. She's pretty like Lily, but she dresses... business-like. Business-like, I ask? She's... She's always wearing a suit. Ah, I see. And that makes her less pretty somehow. Hanako gives an embarrassed shake of her head. No, just... Different. I'll admit it, this has got me intrigued. To hear Hanako talk about someone other than Lily as a first, and to be complimentary about it, too. But as I try to picture this mystery sister, all I can think of is Lily in a suit. And I can't imagine that not being attractive. Not at all. Well, one day you'll have to introduce me to her, I say. Uh, okay. Our brief conversation ends as abruptly as it started, and we both return to our novels. The passage of time is marked only by the gradual movement of the patch of light cast through the window. Slowly, the noises from the various rehearsals in the building fade out and die as students start to get hungry and tired. Just thinking about that makes my stomach start to turn knots around itself. I think it's time to head back. Do you think Lily would be back by now? I think I might head back to my dorm. I'm pretty tired from this week. And not a word of that is a lie. Moving to a new school as it ramps up for a major event has been taxing, to say the least. I feel myself nodding off as I read my book. Oh, okay, Hanako says. I, I might stay here a little longer. Looking at Hanako's book, I can see that she is only a few pages away from completing it. For a moment, I consider hanging around until she finishes, but once again my stomach turns, emitting a gurgling sound. Sure thing, I say. Well, I'm going to head off before it gets dark. I'll see you around, okay? Oh, okay. See you, Hassau. Later. Hisao? Hmm? Th thank you f for hanging out with me. I can see how hard it was for her to get that simple sentence out of her mouth. It leaves me hanging for a moment. So, there is someone in this school who is even lonelier than me. Well, maybe lonely is a wrong word. I haven't been lacking company for this first week, but I've still managed to feel somewhat alone and detached. Maybe lonely is a wrong word for Hanako, too. She has Lily after all, doesn't she? I realize I've been standing there far too long without answering and pull off a flawless, not too exaggerated smile. You're welcome, I say. Good night, Hanako. Night. I leave her to finish her book and head back to the dorms and the promise of food.
The next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. Sleeping late is fine since it's a Sunday and there are no classes. Not just a Sunday though, but the festival as well. From my window, I can already see some people at the soba booth slinging noodles onto plates for people with a craving for low quality food. I throw back a handful of my morning meds and ponder how to spend the day. There will be a few exams in the coming week, but I don't consider those as ominous as others, so I'm not as worried about them as I probably should be. With no urgent obligations regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. Finishing my morning routine, I exit into the hallway, intending to go out and find something to eat. Passing by his door, I decide to see what Kenji is up to today out of impulse. I'm curious if he has any plans, since everyone is doing something. Then again, I can picture him having built a soundproof shelter in his room. Or possibly something like a fort, complete with a no girls allowed sign. And with the girls crossed out and bodies crudely scrawled underneath it. Knocking on his door, which is luckily devoid of any kind of sign, I hear again the unsettling clicking of at least ten locks being pulled back. The door opens up a crack. The conversation with Kenji continues like in the Emmy path until we talk about his class. What are you going to do? We should hang out in here. You can help me build my fort. We might still make it if we work together. I don't know, I tell him. I'm pretty hungry, so I thought I'd go get some food first and then check out the attractions. Your class project seemed pretty cool, and I gave a hand with it, so I want to see at least that one and chat with Lily, I guess. Speaking of that, don't you have any obligation for the project? Are you out of your mind? That blind broad is up to no good. I can feel it in my spleen, man. Her presence is like a dark shadow that's in the way of my great vision. As expected of blind people. What? Besides, I thought that you were also... He holds up his hand to interrupt me. Only legally. Metaphorically, I can see farther than any man before me has seen. Kenji looks stoically into the metaphorical distance to emphasize his statement, thrusting his chin forward to look manlier. Actually, it's just the corridor wall two meters away, but it's all the same. I can see the future of mankind, and it's a dark one unless the threat of women is stifled. They are everywhere. He fingers his scarf nervously, faster and faster, like he's trying to start a fire then slowly begins to calm down once the panic attack finishes running its course. I'm going to have to find some place to hide in, a safe haven, and then knock the lights out of myself so that I don't have to experience this horrible day. I have the perfect thing for that. I must prepare now. Don't go to the festival. Okay, I say. Later, dude. The door slowly closes with a low creak, and I don't know how to feel about what Kenji just said. Okay, another big decision this time around. As I said at the end of the last episode, we are firmly on the Hanako lily path at this point, and the only decision left to make as far as that was which one we're going to go down. Uh, if we go to the library, which we chose this time, we go down the Hanako path. If we decide to take a walk to town, we go down the lily path, since that's the direction that she headed. So this was the uh, deciding factor in joining up with Hanako. The day of the festival dawns, and as every single one of the days starts off, we come out in the hallway and have a conversation with Kenji. Uh, pretty much most of the conversation, probably about three-fourths of it, is exactly the same every single time. That's why I went ahead and cut it out. We saw it all in the Emmy path where he talks about being surprised by it and how he doesn't finish his fort and he doesn't know what he's going to do because there's going to be people everywhere, etc., etc. Uh, the difference comes in depending on which girl we are seeing. Last time with Emmy, he talked about how she was a danger and how many people she had put into the hospital running through the halls. This time around, we talk about uh, 
going and seeing what's happening with Lily since we helped uh, his class put the banner together and work on their particular uh, stall. Uh, strangely enough, there's not a conversation that has to do with Hanako. Um, we get both conversations. The only one is is about Lily since since uh, they're still really the two pathway that we're going down here. So ever since our day spent in the library with Hanako, we are firmly on the Hanako path now. We will label this one Hanako number one. And starting with the next episode, we will see how the festival goes and what sorts of activities we get up to with the shyest girl in the school.